Eclipse are as actual technologies. They are growth in web technology. So the way that you have um, HTML, the um, original HTML that was um, basically the bedrock of web technology, which is skeletal, that's um, your website without any form of design, or web 1.0, where basically all you can do on the web is read information. You can't, um, you can't see any fancy stuff. You can only read stuff on, on the net, like you're reading a newspaper. And then Web2, which introduced aesthetics for design, and that's where we got CSS, where people are now able to in infuse color, infuse um, a bit of motion. Yeah, basically improve, um, improve web technology using aesthetics and feedback. And then we now have Web3, which is basically an adva another advancement in technology. But this time, the bedrock or the most significant part of that growth has to do with the blockchain basically so um when we talk about web3 don't don't see it as one major thing i remember when this became um this became popular when web3 became popular one of the biggest challenges for people was trying to understand or consume the information many thought web3 is just many thought web3 was this um alien um alien experience where like you know that big thing, that very scary thing on the web, and then everybody started fidgeting. Some tried to read, but we're not getting any tangible information. Of course, this was all because many did not see it as, as it truly was, as just a simple upgrade in the web and not something really new. It's not new. Blockchain has been existing for a long time. Many of you have heard of Bitcoin. You've heard of Ethereum. Ethereum has been existing for a while. Um, Bitcoin has been available for a very long time. And basically, since those things came into existence, Web3 also came into existence. But it's now limelight. It's now gotten into limelight because of um, um, people are now finding different ways to incorporate Web3 into um, the existing web technology. Um, another one, WebXR, is also an emerging technology. Um, two years ago, there was this craze about um, the metaverse. I don't know who remembers that. Craziest moment in issues with my internet. Mm, it seems Ozena is having issues with, with his internet. I hope you guys still can hear me. This internet is like, everywhere. It's everywhere. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, he's back now. Yes, yeah, so my back. Ozenia, someone called. Back. Yeah, yeah, someone tried to call my phone. Um, I can't use my actual ISP because if I tried to, you probably would never hear me. So I'm using Airtel. Unfortunately, Airtel is no better. <laughs> All right, so let's hope let's hope this continues well. Um, maybe I'll just turn off. I may eventually turn off my video to save some bandwidth. But if yeah, let's just continue. If it doesn't get better, I'll probably just turn off my video. All right. So um, yeah, as I was saying, um, 2021 was the metaverse craze, right? I don't know who remembers that period. If you remember that period, you could just drop an emoji. like metaverse the possibilities of the metaverse and um, we remember some major major um money bags in the industry throwing a lot of money to see that future come to now facebook was like the major investor in the metaverse case that's which is now meta basically in fact the name change was because of that craze and now it's about two years already how time flies um also i think microsoft um microsoft nvidia many many other top guns also threw a lot of money into extended reality now i i had some time to ask myself this question does that mean the old metaverse thing has faded hell no 
it hasn't. And the reason why I believe that it hasn't be is because originally that technology is not for now, to be told. And I, I mentioned this some while back while I was giving a talk on XR. And I said, the technology is not for now because people are yet to consume it the full potential of web technology to the point where they are ready to accept um, new emerging technology like the um, extended, like the virtual reality headset, right? And as time goes on, we would eventually get back to that point where that really, really, really becomes the future. But for now, um, simpler means of extended realities are more appreciated. And a good example is Snapchat. And um, how many of us know Snapchat? You've used Snapchat before at any point in time, or you've used an Instagram filter, you could just pop up. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Now, those are simpler methods of executing extended reality. Now, to be clear, the technology behind Snapchat filter, Instagram filter, which other application has filters? Basically, every application that is able to change stuff on your face, make you look older, make you look younger, change your hair color, put some earrings on your face, um, eyelashes and stuff. Basically, all those stuff are um, powered by augmented reality, which is a subset of extended reality. Now, you realize that that technology is, going, is not going to be Parkinson. It could only even get better. Right? Now, with this, with this said, be it Web3, be it extended reality, what are the opportunities for designers? Now, the question is, are there actual opportunities for designers? And if there are opportunities for designers, what are like the actual opportunities for designers? That said, I'm already moving ahead of my slide. As I said, I'm not a slide guy, but let's venture back to our slides. And all right, yeah, brief overview of Web3 and WebX, I think I've made mention of that. So yeah, importance of understanding and embracing new technologies in the design industry. So I think and this is where we at. Now, staying relevant. And um, for everyone who follows me on Twitter, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's been great having to post content for you guys to learn from and also share some of my thoughts about design. And that leads me to the first point, staying relevant. Now, for those who have been following me for a while, you would know one thing. When it comes to keeping up with trends or when it comes to setting up trends itself, I do my best to stay at the very top. Now, not because I have time, but naturally I'm a design lover. Now, unlike many people that may come here and say that, well, design is my passion. I love the money that comes with design, but I am more passionate about design first. And that's why it's easier for me to learn any design training in almost no time and do so well at it. Because of course, I do have some passion for design. And this itself has kept me at the top of the food chain in terms of getting acquainted with new trends. When before Metaverse, before the old topic Metaverse became a thing, I have had the privilege to join a startup. Before Metaverse became something people were ready to talk about, I had built a couple of products. I became a team lead around that time as well, leading a set of um, web XR engineers as a designer that was because several months before then i had um, seen into the technology started learning a few things about the technology wrote a few case studies about the technology made a few designs about the technology and yeah it landed me an opportunity so by the time xr became the global topic i had had my share of um, the space i have had enough talks about the space i've gotten enough opportunities around the space so that is one thing having to learn new technologies would give you. It will make you remain relevant in the market. Number two, innovate and differentiate. Basically, by exploring new design fields, designers can bring fresh ideas, perspectives to their work, helping them stand out in comp from competition. All right, so this also leads me to the same thing, um, the same point. Um, at the moment, I am currently experimenting something called experimental design. And for those who've been following me again, you would notice that for the last few months, my style of design has drastically evolved. 
because that is the new way to portray design. Now, it is not yet a thing. So most likely you would only find a few people doing, attempting that kind of design. Or probably I'm the only one you know who's even designing in that manner. There's a big chance that that is. Now, I'm doing that because I realized that very soon, the old style to web design is going to change. And I began to experiment, look into this new style of design, understand this new style of design, experiment with this new style of design, create fresh ideas, break the rules, remote the rules, redefine the rules to design, create new rules to design, and basically just doing this within the last few months I've been experimenting has also given me several opportunities to work with um, companies who are willing to pay a ridiculous high amount of money for just that. Now, the beautiful part of it, this is this, is because this is the way to design, this is the future of design, even those who you think would not pay high for such a design are actually willing to because they also are willing they also want to position themselves in that space that allow people to view their products as up to date so that is another pretty important um, thing to talk about um number three meet changing user needs of course now, as technology begins to emerge, you are able to, you are more equipped to do more. You are basically equipped to do more. Now, security has been one of the major challenges to web technology. Acts being the major, um, um, the major poison, right? People are able to hack your information or hack your computer, get, in, get very, very important information from your computer and steal those information. Another example is um, the old privacy policy thing that um, Meta has actually been one of the major culprits. Google also has been one of the major culprits to privacy um, privacy policies where your information has been stolen and then used for marketing purposes. Now, if this thing has ever happened to you, let me know. So have you been in a situation where you are just having a random conversation about something? You have not searched it on the internet. You are basically just talking about it. And then you pick up your phone, go on YouTube or go on Google, and you type the first three letters of that word, and then it brings it to you. Knowing that that is not the only word that exists with that, that three thing. Anybody? Yeah, so yeah. Now, the, the first time I noticed it, it was like witchcraft, because Trust me, there were probably 1,000 words that would have been a better option for Google to present to me rather than that particular word. And yeah, it was shocking. It's made me realize that, should be told, there is no such thing as privacy, right? Because these guys really do have access to everything, including the microphone on your phone. Now, these are like major challenges. How do you solve this kind of problem? Now, Apple did come up with an upgrade last year that helps you limit this access to these people because, of course, Apple has... Apple does not sell um, information because there are no social media platform. Um, but the companies like Google, Facebook are willing to pay a ridiculous amount of money for those things. So that's one solution. But what about on the web? The things you search for, the things you talk about, your Twitter, the things you talk about, the things you, your replies on social media platform, your search history on Google, every of these things really talk about who you are and your interest. But with emerging technology or with um, new technologies like Web3, these things can really be dealt with. So that is one major importance of emerging technology and embracing new technologies, basically. Now, the first being drive industry good, of course. Um, with new technology, you can do a lot more. You can cook up ideas. You can come up with innovative ideas that are able to you know, um, driving the economy forward. A good, everybody loves a good innovation. If your product is good enough and provides user needs, they will definitely pay some money for it. So yeah, um, next slide. All right, so you have mentioned a few reasons why you should embrace emerging technology. So what or how can you equip yourself or how can you, yeah, how can you equip yourself with these skill sets how can you get into understanding these skill sets and basically that's what i tagged them 
design challenges. Since we are designers, basically design challenges is that one thing that would help us get acquainted with some of these technologies. Now, um, the first one here says, user experience and user interface consideration for decentralized application dApps, basically. So, um, well, we don't get to talk about Web3 as we used to two years ago. So this may not actually resonate with some people, but for those who have been in design for that long, you will definitely resonate with what I'm about to say. So about that time, um, there was an influx of um, young guns trying to get into the Web3 space. And all they could do was basically replicate some designs that they found on other designers' platform or other designers' um, um, channel. And basically, this wasn't doing much, right? Uh, please give me a sec. I may need to switch my internet. It shouldn't take so long. Okay, sure, sure. Okay, so while I'm waiting for them, I'm pleased to announce to you that I can finally share my video with you guys because the light is back on. So um, let's give us in a few seconds to change his um, router. <laughs> I can see Avia, my guy is dropping emojis. So I'm so happy. I'm excited. So once he's, once he's done presenting, I'll just like, I'll share my video so you guys can also share yours. I'll just take screenshots, please, guys. Yeah, I would appreciate that before Nepal do their thing again, I beg, please. <laughs> Okay, but so far, I'd like to hear from you guys. I hope you guys are... Oh, Bori, Bori, you're saying you're shy. Please don't be shy, you. Please don't be shy. But I hope you guys are, like, understanding what Ozen Y is um, sharing, sharing with us. I'd like to hear from you guys. Look, man, have you been following? Suleiman, good evening. How are you doing? Have you been following? I don't know if you can hear me. i just like to know quickly before Ozen comes back. And since Suleiman cannot hear me, Okay, Manuel, can you hear me? Good evening, Manuel. How are you doing today? Good evening. I'm very, very fine. I'm good. Okay, I'm I'm happy to hear that. I'm fine, thank you. I'm doing fine. Even better now that yeah. there's light. <laughs> so um, <laughs> okay. So um so far, how how has the presentation been for you? Okay, I can see it's been interesting so far. It's also been interesting for me. And I'm so happy as NY is here because I'm just i'm following this thing step by step but i just want to hear from you how is it for you manuel how has it been for you <clears throat> well is it um well i'm still a elena <laughs> <laughs> i get i get yeah. i get it's don't worry about well, what did i say okay it's fine anyway it's fine okay i get don't worry once when he's done you can ask him um, as many questions as as, as you would like. You can I will ask them. I will. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Let, let me see. Okay. Ajay Wale is already sharing his video. Ajay Wale, how are you doing? Good evening. Why did you turn it off now? How are you doing? How has the presentation, the session been for you so far? Were you, were you at the beginning? You can actually see my face. No, I just joined actually. I just saw. If I totally forgot. I totally forgot that the meeting we were on today. So I just joined. Okay, okay, okay. I get. I'm happy you joined. You're, I, you're not so late, Sha, because it's still going on. Our speaker just took a breather and he'll be back um, very soon because of this whole router wahala that I'm sure we are all familiar with. All right. It's fine. Yeah, sure. Sure. Hey. Koi is here. Koi, good evening. Koi Sola, how are you doing? I don't know if she can hear me, Sha. I say Nigerian network. It's everywhere. Me, I use MTN and Glow, and I still hi, experience him. I can hear you. How are you? Okay, hi. I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Yeah, we're happy to have you going. So let me just give you guys a sneak peek. Coin is going to be one of the speakers for our panel session for 21st of this month. So Coin Salah, I'm happy you are here. I'm, I'm sure. Okay, Ozenwa is back. Okay, our speaker is back. 
So, Zenua, you're welcome. You're welcome. We missed you, and we're happy to have you back. You can continue. Um, all right. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah. Let's continue then. Okay, so um, for the sake of um, good internet, I may not be able to put on my um, camera. If it gets better from here, I'm, I'm monitoring the speed, but if it gets better, I'm probably going to like just do that. But for now, it's still pretty low, so I'm just going to keep using the audio. Okay, sure, that's completely fine. We understand. You can continue however it's convenient for you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so I was talking about having design challenges to improve your skill as a designer in this space. But before we get there, um, I would likely want to talk about all that things you need to do before you begin design challenges. So a good one would be, um, first and foremost, learning enough about the technology itself. So I'm going to tell you what I did, learning some of these things and how those things have contributed to my understanding of it and my an increase in my um, proficiency as a designer. <clears throat> so basically, when it comes to Web3, first and foremost, you don't want to start designing. Because truth be told, you really don't know anything about Web3. Now, I am not even trying to sound terrible or anything. But a good way to describe it is, um, Let's say you're a science student. You studied science all through your time in secondary school. You went to the university, and then you kept on doing science. And then once one day, you decided you want to go and write an economics exam, or let's say an economics master exam. And then you sit in the exam hall. You saw the first question. You, did, you concluded it was a difficult one. The second question, you concluded it was a difficult one still. And by the end of the exam, you realize you couldn't answer any question. And then your conclusion was, it was a difficult exam. I couldn't even write anything. So the question would be, are you capable of attending the exam? No, you're not. <clears throat> you're not because you have no basic knowledge about the, the course itself. You have no basic knowledge about how to um, approach the exams, you have no knowledge of how to answer the questions because you've not studied for the exam. Now, that's what most people do when it comes to design. They realize there's a new trend in design, and the first thing they want to do is start designing. Without understanding the basis of that to any emerging technology, or before you can pick up a new design pattern, a new design style. You want to understand the fundamentals of that particular thing. So what I did was, first off, I signed up for a course, a free course, yeah. So in case I say sign up for a course, don't think I went to pay some ridiculous amount of money. You can get free courses on YouTube. So far, they are tailored to what you're looking for. So first off, I signed up for a course that taught blockchain as a technology not design blockchain, not blockchain design, not designing for blockchain, but blockchain itself to understand how the technology worked. Now, after I was able to get enough, now enough does not mean I got all from that one course. Enough means I could teach blockchain, meaning I could set up a class and then I'll teach people on the topic of blockchain without mincing my words. After I did that, I went on to researching on the challenges people have or people face whenever using blockchain products. Now, this was where design became interesting. Before I started putting sketches, before I started doing sketches, before I started like attempting to make a design, I researched on the challenges people face when it comes to using blockchain technology. That was like basic thing you would do whenever you want to do UX research. Now, that exposed me to existing realistic challenges. I'm not talking about color challenges now. I'm not talking about font challenges. I'm actually talking about people being unable to understand the blockchain jargons. Now, I, I did that for about a month. And by the time of my research, um, my research practice, I had several, several amount of things to solve. I, have, I had a list, a full list of actual challenges people go through when using blockchain products. 
first being information distribution. Another is clot, um, cluttered UI, right? Now, for information distribution, all I need to do was became, become better at um, communication or become better at speaking English. Now, I mean the blockchain English, right? Because users naturally, now when it comes to um, this, when it comes to sharing information on the blockchain, many things can be very difficult to understand. There are different um, linguas to it. Now, how do you present this lingua in a way that any random person doesn't have to go to a blockchain school to understand what you're talking about? That became top priority. Meaning I have to simplify some terms. I have to break down some terms. Where I could use images to explain certain things, I have to use images. For places where illustration would do good in explaining some things, <clears throat> we have to do all that. I have to create flows. I have to create slides to achieve the goal of simplifying lingua whenever it came to the blockchain, to blockchain. Now, a very common one that people really do not even understand what it means has to be the concept of ramp and unramp transactions in blockchain. I know a lot of people would use that, so I'm using that as a good example. Now, those are like two instances, ramp on ramp. And these two things make very significant. I, I, I came across a design and someone called it on ramp. And then when I check, I checked the UI this person designed, and then I realized that what makes a transaction ramp or on ramp was completely avoided. Right? When you say on ramp, it's the conversion of fiat to crypto or the other way. Now, this person completely missed the whole idea and did not do that simple thing, but then called it on ramp. Most likely saw someone like maybe a senior in the field work on a design and then the person chose to copy without paying attention to those particular things now that's a major challenge you want to make sure you mitigate such challenges as a designer now another good example or another thing you want to focus on has to be um yeah determining or being able to determine other sim um other major challenges for blockchain users now, some of the examples here are simplifying the onboarding process. Good. Simplifying the onboarding process, ensuring responsiveness across platform, basic, integrating with existing system. Yeah, I think this is also some pretty important points. Integrating with existing systems. Now, um, a good example of such a system would be Binance. Now, Binance is not completely a decentralized system. It's a mix of both. Now, this is a very good way of serving um, a way of... Is my internet still good? Can you all still hear me? Mm, we can. I'm getting noticed that my internet is bad. We can hear you, but we can't see your slide anymore. Uh -huh. I thought of that as well. Sorry. Okay, that's fine. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just continue talking. Okay. How about now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you? But can you see my screen now? Or not yet? No, not yet. Oh, not yet. I, I can see you okay. are presenting Sorry. now. Yeah. Okay, so my current speed is less than 2 Mbps. I don't know what I should do with that, but I, I guess we are just going to manage it. All right, so apologies, please. I don't know. I wish I could do something about this, but let's pray it gets better. Thank you very much. Okay, yes, yeah, so <clears throat> as I was saying, whenever you bring in emerging technology to users, Make sure you're combining it with, some, with something they're already used to. That way, it's easier for them to um, continue using the app, knowing they are, they are around a safe space, right? You don't want to take someone who has never been to a swimming pool before. You don't want to go dump them in the ocean. It would be way too much for them to, you know, to digest. You either want to start slowly, introducing that new technology slowly, a good percentage will be 80% of what they're used to, 20% of the new. And then you grow that scale till everybody is now beginning to accept this new technology 
and then you can now serve it at 100%. That is, was basically Meta's major error, something people have never used before. As of when I got into XR, 90% of the people I knew have never used the VR headset, but then Meta wanted to take all their products into the Metaverse, which was like way too much of a leap, right? So um, yeah, other things would include, designer must prioritize privacy, security, and trust by incorporating privacy by design. Implementing robust security measures, communicating the trustless nature of blockchain technology and educating users on Web3 implementation. Basically what I've been saying all day, communicating the idea behind Web3 has to be the most important thing you could do for any particular product that is a Web3 product. There's a lot of jargons in the, in the space. How you serve that information is very important how you make people realize that, okay, for this particular platform, you may not necessarily be using what is called a password, you'll be using what is called a, a keychain or um, your um, a set of um, characters that you, you don't necessarily have to remember, but you can always copy them somewhere safe in your, in your device and then whenever you need them, you can fetch them, right? Basically, these are important things you need to communicate to your users so you don't have issues where everybody keeps creating a new wallet every single week all right so next slide um yeah similar to um what we discussed earlier is also web webxr for webxr you would also need to work on challenges or basically you first need to understand the background of webxr now a good way to start with webxr is to understand the concept around 3d now note i am not telling you to learn blender i am not telling you to learn a 3D software, I'm only saying understand the concept around three-dimensional space. It's co two completely different things. You can learn everything about Blender and not understand three-dimensional space, right? So um, take some time, study well on three-dimensional space. You want to study about depth of field. You want to study about perspectives. You want to study about um, spatial design, etc. And of course, you want to also start looking into ensuring usability and accessibility in immersive experiences. Now, you realize that for this two slides, it's more of a research phase rather than an actual design phase first. So you will be doing a lot of research to understand the space. And then that research will now take you to, the, to a position where you are able to create designs without even needing inspiration from someone else because now you know what problems you're solving and you know how best to serve them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Designers must create web XR experiences that are compatible and adaptive across various platforms and devices. Optimizing performance for smooth and immersive experiences. Ensuring usability and accessibility in web XR include designing intuitive interaction, incorporating inclusive design elements, providing Clear navigation, very important. Offering appropriate feedback and affordance and prioritizing user comfort and safety. Now, I know this is a lot to digest all at once, but I'll try as much as possible to explain some very important points. So now, I don't know who knows, but for those of you who have at some point in time made research about the VR headset, you will know it's pretty expensive. Not that expensive as your iPhone, but it's pretty expensive, right? So the first one I got, I got for 200,000 Naira. But right now, the same headset has cost about 400,000 Naira because it has just gone up for no good reason. Now, because it's just an headset, not many people would be happy to commit that much amount of money to securing a VR headset. So the question is this, how can you as a designer transform the designs that would sit on the headset to designs that we can use on our smartphones. Now, if case you don't know, in case you don't have an answer for that, I'm going to use a very similar situation. So for those of us that use, that browse most of the web on our desktops, on our PCs, on our laptops, I am sure we are aware that we can also browse the same content on our mobile phones, right? Now, this is exactly the same situation. If you can design for the headset, can you as a designer also begin to think of transforming that experience to mobile? 
Now, this way you are ensuring that that design or that approach to solving designs is adaptive and compatible with different devices, either on the VR headset or on your mobile phones. Now, other things that are major challenges would include accessibility in WebXR. Now, there is accessibility in design, general accessibility in design. But when I was doing my research, I realized that most of those things, some still apply, but a good lot do not apply for, the, for um, extended reality. Because extended reality is being guided by a completely different set of rules, and that's spatial design. Meaning, unlike your desktop, that all you have is the width of your desktop. There is no depth in the desktop. There is just height and there is width. There is a white canvas or a black canvas. However, whichever device you're using will determine. But then there is extended reality that is neither bound by length, height, or depth. Basically, it's a vast space. And the amount of space you have depends on the amount of space you think you want to have. Now, how does accessibility work in such a scenario? Now we are no more talking about backgrounds. We are talking about environments, meaning it could either be day or night. It could either be sunny, dusky, or easy. How does this information affect the kind of design you're serving to your users? How does it affect the kind of fonts you're going to choose? How does it affect the kind of colors you're bringing into design? Now, these are the things I have actually studied myself, documented some of the process, documented some of my research. And then I have included, I have packed all of this together. And basically, it has helped me in designing for VR. I have designed for VR, I've designed for WebXR, I've designed for A, I've basically designed for all XR platforms with the research I did. And you all have to do the same in case you want to go in into these um, fields. Now, don't make it seem like a lot, right? If you are a UI designer, you know you did a lot of research learning UI before you got to where you are. So basically, it's, it's the same. It's like going to school. You just have to learn. And um, yeah, opportunities in Web3 and WebXR. So I'm going to rush through this. I think I've made mention of a lot already. Growing demand for designers with expertise in the solar system and blockchain technology. So yeah, basically, it's as simple as that. For as, more, for as long as emerging technology arises, there will be demand for people in the space. Innovations in user interface and decentralized application design, same. Um, other things would include expanding the possibilities of for storytelling, marketing, education through immersive experiences. This one I particularly fancy a lot, especially when it comes to e-commerce and education. Creating unique and engaging experiences for users in various industries. Now, what tools, what skills, do you need to venture into Web3 and WebXR? Now, uh, just as I said earlier again, familiarity with blockchain technology. If for nothing, familiarity with blockchain technology will make you become a genius in Web3 and Web3 design. Smart contracts and decentralized systems. So decentralized systems could be a lot of things. It could be decentralized commerce, decentralized finance, decentralized gaming, anything and um yeah for so for tools you would um for your web3 tools you don't need any actual tool aside for your understanding of the blockchain and then you can just pick up figma and start doing stuff for xr you have adobe Aero, Spark ar lens studio effect house unity and unreal engine now each of these have their unique um stations Adobe Aero, Spark AR, Lens Studio, Effect House are all mobile and they are all augmented reality. Unity and Unreal Engine, on the other hand, are for virtual reality. Unity is for Unity and Unreal can do AR and um, VR. I am not so sure which one particularly is for. I think Unity does MR, right? Um, I think of all the R's. MR is the one I've actually least invested in. So um, I don't know which one particularly. I think Unity also works for, for MR. I, I, think, I think it does. Um, yeah, knowledge of WebXR device APIs, A-Frame, 3JS, 
and of course web excel libraries are like tools you would need to learn if you want to like really really dive deep into this excel space now what is the future of web and web excel good question now the best way to talk about these two things as a singular entity is to begin to innovate ideas that helps us converge Web3 and WebXL technology. Number two, the potential for new design paradigms and opportunities for designers. Yes. So Web3 would not be the end. Now, I remember before Web3 as a thing, before the wave went down, trust me, it's still very relevant, but before the wave went down, went down we began to have tech, we we began to hear a lot about web 4 and web 5 so it simply means engineers are already beginning to come by the ideas behind or build ideas around the next emerging technology now 2 years ago ai was not a topic and trust me ai is no news artificial intelligence is not news i believe since the beginning of since since when i started listening to TV or watching TV, I have been hearing about artificial intelligence. So it's not new, but now it's the thing, right? And the beautiful thing is AI has a way of influencing WebXR. I cannot particularly say how it directly influences Web3 because I've not done that research, but I am very, very certain of how it influences WebXR, right? And now that combination is able to bring about a new future in the in web experience now i i was saying some a year back how the new wave of technology would be completely sound augmented meaning people would use their voice more and use sound feedbacks as means of communicating with the web now web xr brought about that thought they thought that, okay, so the truth is this, when I'm putting on the headset, I can't use a keyboard. Or when I'm using my phone to view a virtual space, I can't type at the same time. What is the best way to communicate with my device and take actual action? Of course, the solution was voice or sound. Now, with the emergence of artificial intelligence, AI now, not image generation AI this time around, but AI itself, um, a good example of such an AI, generative AI like uh, um, just GPT would be a wonderful um, innovation in voice um, in voice technology, where everything I say has a potential to create new stories and new engagements with my virtual space. Meaning, what you experience on the same application will and or may be completely different to what. I experience because of generative AI like ChatGPT, where if I ask a question particular to myself, it gives me a response that is completely tailored to myself. And that way, each and one of us have uniquely different experiences on the same platform. That is the power of combining WebXR and artificial intelligence. Now, in the space of Web3, a lot of things could also be done, a decentralized metaverse. Now, I had the opportunity to work on a decentralized metaverse in 2021. And yeah, it's a really wonderful thing to talk about. Now, how does that actually work? Let me give you a good answer. So basically, when you talk about the metaverse, you know it's a completely virtual space, meaning everything is done virtually. Now, imagine you set up a business in the metaverse. Now, I hope I'm, at this point I won't begin to say rubbish that you probably don't understand, but just try to follow. Just try to follow. I'm sure it will make sense. Let's assume you create a shop in, on the metaverse, a business on the metaverse. How would you receive money? Now, the traditional way of receiving money via fiat would be to begin to, you will need to begin to, you know, enter your bank details, you know, aut aut authorized transactions, OTPs, and stuff like that, which simply means you would need to type stuff right but here's where the fun comes in with web3 all that challenge is mitigated completely mitigated by the use of um what you call the um, cryptocurrency 
Now, cryptocurrency sits on the internet. It is completely decentralized, and all you need to do is to simply sign a smart contract, meaning your first experience of the, on the metaverse, all you just need to do is authorize a single transaction from either your device or your smartphone at once, and then every transaction you perform on the metaverse mm -hmm. is authorized using that particular smart contract. The beautiful thing is this, the smart contract is completely safe. And that is how you're able to exchange money on the metaverse, right? Now, that's a wonderful integration between Web3 and WebXR. Immersive virtual worlds where users can interact with each other and share digital assets in a trustless environment, basically what I just explained. Now, tokenized virtual goods and services, the integration of blockchain technology with, with WebXR enables new businesses, business models such as tokenized virtual assets, same thing basically, virtual currencies and inward economics. Other interesting stuff, spatial UI and UX design. Interesting field, I don't see nobody talking about it. Um, in case you want to stand out as a designer and you want to probably be the next big name or the next big um, target for industries, you probably want to look into spatial UI UX or you want to look into sound UI UX, or basically you just want to become someone that does a lot with artificial intelligence. Free tip. Yeah. Designers will need to create innovative user experience and experience for 3D, immersive environments, moving beyond traditional 2D design principles. Social and collaborative experiences. The combination of WebTree and WebXR offers opportunities for designers to create shared spaces, facilitating collaboration, communication, and social interaction among users. Wonderful thing for you to experience. Like we had several sessions where everybody in the company puts on their headset and within the virtual space, we are seated next to each other. We can bump fist, we can even share a hug sometimes. Okay. Wonderful experience. Wonderful. Um, someone is, someone's mic is on. The feedback is creepy. Um, yeah, personalization and adaptive design. As a Web3 and XR, as a 3 and, WebXR technologies advanced, designers will have the opportunity to develop more personalized and adaptive experiences using AI, machine learning, and real-time user data to tailor environments and interaction to individual users. Basically, now a good example of this is what I spoke about earlier, where how you interact with the AI model within that virtual space would tailor your experiences to your personality. Someone should actually work on that. I would love to collaborate as much as I can if I find someone who is willing to work on such an experience. Um, and last one, ethical considerations. Designers must navigate the ethical implications of creating immersive experiences, 100%, in decentralized environments. Addressing issues such as user privacy, very important, data ownership, and potential for manipulation or addiction, which most likely is the biggest concern for um, the metaverse as a topic. Right, um, um, Nubi Messi, Akuridi, your mic is on, so you probably want to turn it off. Oops. Um, yeah, um, that said, I think this is the last slide, and um, I hope you know I've been able to give proper exposition to um, WebXR and Web3. And um, yeah, I'll be happy to take questions from now. I'm so sorry I didn't share any pictures or share anything I've done in the past. Um, well, I, I just believe in explaining would do a lot better job than, yeah, but I guess that's just it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Ezenwa, for that amazing session. You did really, really well. You did well, seriously. And about the picture thing, don't, I, I don't really think that's even, like, it's not, it's not an issue, don't worry. So thank you so much once again for coming on today's session and taking us through the journey of Web3 and Web, Web XR. We've learned a lot. Thank you so much. And I love what you guys did. Before I even mentioned, you guys already dropped, uh, started dropping the emojis already for Ozenwa. So thank you, Ozenwa. So we are moving to the, we'll move to the um, question section now. So if you have any question, please kindly raise your hand and then, um, and then you can ask your question so please if you have any question just raise your hand like use the hand raise icon sorry use the hand raise icon or just indicate okay in the message um, section i can see victor has a question you can go ahead 
Um, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. you can, I can hear you. Okay, um, I'll just, it's a very quick one. First of all, I've already seen someone asking of the slides on message session, income message. So that's to I'll still will be grateful if the slides can be provided to you. Then, um, so I think you should drop your I, um, Twitter and uh, probably LinkedIn handles for us so we can follow you and get updates of the latest trends. Then um, the question, I don't know, I know you didn't talk much about XR2, but um, like yesterday I did a little research on the, the web XR. I saw a course which I wanted to take on XR, but I was seeing a lot of stuff. I like I was thinking, hello, can we hear me? Yes, hello? I can hear you. Yes, sure, I can hear you. I can hear you. So I was seeing some stuff that I was thinking that huh, these ones are some here. But I was seeing Unity, Unreal, and all that. And I was trying to differentiate it. Is it that if we are because the course is in three parts. It's on Coursera, actually. The introduction to the WebXR, then designing user experience for WebXR, and the third part was uh, um, building webs and um, building WebXR projects and WebXR apps. So I wanted to know if that's going to be part of our job because I was seeing technologies that was kind of strange. I was seeing things like E-Frame stuff like that and when i did a little research about that i was seeing we need to have c, c plus plus um uh, knowledge and stuff like that then if you can just give us a little i'm saying too much i hope you are taking note of it i'm saying then you can just give us a little hint about the web excel the difference between the ar ER, and mr and that would also be that also give us a clue to what we are heading for and to be able to make us research properly. We are actually. Um, I don't know if. Oh, okay, good. Good. I, I thought my internet went out again. Me too. I thought it was from my end, but I stopped hearing Victor speak. Victor, are you done with your question? Mm, maybe he has issues with his internet, but as anyway, did you get his question? I think I did. So I'll try to answer. Now, if I missed anything, you could fill me in on what I missed. So I. Yeah, I guess I'll just go on with it, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. You can just um, answer his question based on what you heard. All right. Um, yeah, sure. Definitely. Excuse me. All right. So um, now I do understand your plight. And trust me, you don't have to. I spent a total of four months learning XR. Now, when I say learning, I mean before i could even join up a meeting like before i could contribute in the team meetings we did when i was still working full-time as an xr designer before i could contribute to anything being said in the meetings it took me four months to understand the whole concept so if you're not getting it trust me i understand i feel your pain completely because the rules that guide xr are completely different for what you find as a UI UX designer for mobile and web design, right? And so here, here are my takes on how to go about it. So uh, for the sake of people who want to, um, well, basically I did write a small course. I did a small course. I wrote a small book for XR. That's one. Secondly, you may not necessarily find many, many videos on YouTube for designers, which is a major, a major setback as well. But uh, one thing you want to do is look into um, 
look into understanding the concept around 3D. If 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 you want to understand anything about XR, the first thing you need to do is understand how perspective work, 3D, three-dimensional space. Now, that too may be difficult to, I'm so sorry, man, like it was really an audio figuring these things out. So it may also be difficult to find actual videos that just explain 3D last three-dimensional space and not um, want to teach you Blender. That would may also be difficult. But tailor your search to understanding three-dimensional space. You most likely find books or articles that do more justice than videos. So if you're not the reading type, you may have to become the reading type. Now, once you have all that resource, you can begin to... Another thing you want to do is actually watch many CGI movies. Uh, I don't know how that helped me I don't know if it's going to help you, but I began to watch CGI breakdowns. I began to watch breakdowns of movies that used heavy CGI because at some point in time, the creators of such movies begin to explain how they made choices of lighting, how they make choices of camera angles and stuff like that, which are very essential in spatial design. Now, um, so the, so the um, differences between all three hams of um, extended reality. So first things first, everything, every alternative reality when it comes to digital products is called extended reality. It basically is the extent is giving humans the opportunity to extend what they are used to within their space. Now the breakdown is virtual reality, augmented reality and mixed reality. So all three of them are extended reality. So for mixed reality, a major conception, a major misconception is mixed reality is a combination of VR and AR. Not true. Mixed reality is AR plus. Now, what is AR itself if mixed reality is AR plus? Augmented reality basically introduces elements, 2D, 3D elements into your real life space. Meaning if you are, a good example, if you Taking a video on Snapchat, it's still you, right? It's still you, but there's a crown on your head, there's an earring on your face, there is a there are eyelashes on your eye on your eye and stuff like that. There's makeup on your face, etc. Now it's still you, but then these elements have been introduced into that real space. Or if you're looking through, if you're going through a product, an AR product where you are able to place, let's say, a TV on your table, a virtual TV on your real life table. The, the virtual TV is a digital element. It's either 2D or 3D, but then it's been introduced into your real life space. Now, mixed reality is a step further into augmented reality. Now, originally in AR, you cannot fully interact with some of these elements. And when I say fully interact, I mean a good example. If Stuff is introduced into your space, although you may be able to tap on them and something would happen, but that's not direct interaction. You are basically tapping on your screen, on your phone. You are tapping on your phone screen, not the object itself. But with mixed reality, you can walk onto the TV, click on a button on the TV, it comes on. You can carry the TV. You can literally carry the TV with both hands and move it to where you want to place it. You can use knobs, you can drag, you can pinch, you can basically do all of these things using hand gestures for mixed reality. But you will notice that these things you are able to interact with are still within your real life space. A good example, Tony Stark. You've all seen an Iron Man movie. If you've not seen an Iron Man movie, you probably shouldn't even be on this call. Now, everything Tony Stark does is completely mixed reality. You see how we picks up stuff in random space, throws them wherever he wants to throw them, and those things react as though he, they are actually there. Now, that is not virtual reality. That is mixed reality. I think that's like the best example, actually. Now, for virtual reality, virtual reality takes you into a virtual space. So you realize that virtual reality is the exact opposite of mixed reality. In mixed reality, that, those elements are introduced to your space. In virtual reality, you are taken into the virtual space and then you can interact with objects within that space. I think that's like the best explanation you'll get anywhere.
yeah, so that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Ezenwa, for that explanation. It was very detailed. I know. Thank you so much. Victor, I hope that was clear enough for you. Yes, it was clear. That's clear. I don't know if I think the last part of my okay. of my question was my network went off. Oh. We want you upstairs. It's okay. I can I can work with this one. Okay, thank you so much.